Egypt, just like with every other country that's gone through the Arab Spring, has had a reordering of its society and its political system. And the election of Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood has given rise to a constitution-making process, just like it has in, in other countries, um, to reformat the system um, and, and actually you know, put some of the principles into play that the revolution was about. The principles as articulated by the Muslim Brotherhood um, hew more closely towards the Islamist view uh, of trying to put more of the rules from the Quran into play in daily life in Egyptian society and pull Egyptian society away from the secular focus it had under President Mubarak. So this is, you know, a shift towards Islam. Um, and when uh, the Muslim Brotherhood came to control the assembly in Egypt, they came to control the constitutional drafting committee that's in charge of drafting the constitution. So uh, you have provisions in the draft constitution that identify Sharia law, which is law from the Quran, uh, as a main source, the main source of legislation in Egypt. Um, that is a huge shift towards Islam, away from a more secular view of government. Um, they didn't go quite as far as they wanted to go. They were advocating for the rules of Sharia uh, being the basis of legislation. All they could manage was the principles of Sharia as a basis for legislation. Still, uh, the constitutional court in Egypt, which was filled with um, judges appointed by President Mubarak, and therefore a lot more secular, uh, saw what was happening, saw where this was going, tried to put a stop to it by dissolving the lower house of parliament. Morsi then responded by saying he's not bound by the courts and accruing more executive power to himself to put the court in check. Uh, the court still is threatening to shut down the assembly, which is why they're voting very quickly on these drafts article by article, all 234 of them each get a vote, uh, and then it will be promulgated. Uh, once the Constitution is promulgated by the Assembly, then it needs to go up to a referendum uh, amongst the, the people of Egypt in 15 days. Um, so what we're really seeing here among the institutions, the President, the Assembly, the Constitutional Court, uh, are a lot of power plays, um, a lot of politics. Um, these are things that we see in democracy. What we don't see in mature democracies is the abuse of power um, that goes along with that, that we're witnessing in, in Cairo. Each of these institutions is abusing power in some way or another. This is what happens when you have societies that don't have the rule of law. Once the Constitution's in place, the Islamist Constitution that is in accord with the, what the Muslim Brotherhood wants, then, then Morsi will have what he wants for the long term. He sees and I think this is a fair statement, uh, he sees his power grab uh, in Cairo as a short-term necessary thing to accomplish the long-term goal uh, of a constitution that the Muslim Brotherhood wants. So this raises the question of process. I mean, there's always two questions when you're dealing with constitution making, process and product. The product is the constitution. That's what we're going to have today when all 234 articles are voted in Cairo and then approved 15 days later. That's the product. We know what that's going to be. The process uh, goes to the legitimacy of the product. Um, if it's a credible process that everyone's participating in, then you have a more durable product. Uh, if it's not a credible process, if it's not a legitimate process, then you have a less durable product that's going to be open to more challenges. You know, they've drafted it in such a way that they're trying to stack the deck with respect to the interpretation of legislation that would come out based on Sharia law. Um, they have identified a particular mosque in, um, in Cairo, an associated university of Sunni Muslim legal scholars uh, that would then interpret the legislation in, in accordance with the Sunni interpretation of Sharia law. As you know, there's a Shiite interpretation of Sharia law like they have in Iran that's completely different from, you know, the, the Arab Sunni version. Um, so, you know, the, they're reaching down pretty far, uh, anticipating that some of these pieces of legislation will be challenged and identifying the correct interpretive bodies to preempt these, which belies the fact that they know this isn't really a legitimate process. And so if you've got more people coming together 
to embrace the, the Constitution, you've got a better Constitution. Because after all, from a policy standpoint, a Constitution is a social compact. And if all the members of society are not part of the social compact, mm -hmm. then you've got a problem. Now, you know, we can criticize ourselves because we started out uh, in 1789 not having everybody as part of the social compact, right? But after the Civil War, African Americans became part of the social compact with the 13th and 14th Amendments to the Constitution. Women became part of the social compact, right? We edited our Constitution as we moved forward in time. We didn't get it right either at the beginning. Um, 